Well, hello everybody. This is Lisa De Nicolet, writer for a year. And whenever people hear that I'm from South Africa, which they hear pretty immediately by my accent, they say to me, but how do you cope with the cold? But it's not the cold, it's the heat. It is so hot. Anyway, uh, we will stay focused and on track. The topic for today is review sites and how the industries change. So we all know it's a changing industry, publishing, magazines, print, media, internet. It's constantly changing and it's a battle to keep up with the trends. And there's so much out there and I've really realized that you can only do some of it some of the time. You, there's no way you can do all of it all of the time. And so I think that's really important. And the other thing, and this is a decision that I've reached recently, is that sometimes when it comes to website creation or uh, you know accompanying media presentations, uh, like websites for mainly, um, or maybe even you know the banners for Facebook, or all these sorts of things. And I know this is going to sound terrible, but one has to compromise slightly on quality because otherwise your entire life becomes about the creation of those things. And meanwhile, I really just want to be writing. Now, I have I have to create a new website, and that's going to be a whole different topic, how to create a website. How do you go about it? And I've had a lot of experience in this, and it's it's not really a fun thing to do, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, we'll tackle that in a different thing. But so today it's looking at reviews. And so when I started out, and this kind of ties into websites as well, and I'm just going to dab my upper lip here, um, things were very different. Most of the reviews were print-based. And so when I created a website, I, you know, bought all those reviews, took photographs of them, posted them online because this is talking 10 years ago. The web wasn't quite as central as it is today. Of course, now we have Google, our, you know, good friend who collates everything for us, which explains why a lot of things have changed. But reviews have also changed, not to mention the fact that many, many print magazines have died and I'm, I know this from personal experience. I'm a magazine designer. I'm a print magazine designer. My passion, my joy, apart from writing, uh, there's nothing I love more apart from writing. And over the course of the past few years, I mean, I've seen magazines just bite the dust. And one of the saddest things, I am currently um, have an excellent freelancing gig at a marvelous magazine, and we get a lot of review um, advanced reader copies, but there's no one really to review them anymore. So that's where I can step in because I have a review site called the Minerva Reader. And I started the Minerva Reader in 2017 because I thought to myself, there are so many books out there. And, you know, bestseller lists, like bestseller lists to a large degree, well, you've got the backing of the big guns, right? But what about all those writers out there? And there are many stunning writers who, you know, don't have those resources, don't have those agents or those publishers. So I thought I really wanted to create a site that focused on the unsung treasures, the unsung heroes out there. And I've done that. And I, I've done that fairly diligently. I haven't done it with the, um, how can you say, the, the timing that I should have. You know, I should have dedicated myself to like maybe, you know, reviewing such and such books per month. But I also find that if I put constraints on myself, then I stop doing a thing. It's the same as people ask me about my writing schedule. And I have one rule when it comes to that. I do one thing a day for my writing. And that could be I scribble something on a post-it note. Or on a really good day, I can write 10,000 words, which is marvelous. So I, I never judge myself for what that thing is going to be. So in the same way with the Minerva Reader, I just wanted to let books come my way, um, find treasures, and then post them. So it's a rather random, intermittent thing, and I'm really hoping next year to expand it and you know be, become more regular with it. But I also don't want to do it in such a way that then I stop enjoying it, and then I'll stop doing it, because that defeats the whole purpose. So, mostly, um, they say that books sell by word of mouth. 
you know, back in the day, you used to be able to do a, a, a giveaway on Goodreads. But now I think it's $100 for um, a giveaway. So I don't really want to do that. Um, you know, Amazon is very, very controlling. You can only post a review if you've made a purchase on Amazon. So that makes Amazon sensationally unobjective as a review site. However, that's the one that people um, rely on. You know, what, what are your reviews on Amazon? What are your ratings on Amazon? What are your ratings on Goodreads? The other thing is Goodreads are flooded by, you know, best-selling authors that pump like three, 400 books in and uh, let the car go by, or all these sorts of things. So so that's why um, I really wanted this the smaller site where I could try and do my part because more and more I see that I mean, this is not a new concept. If we, as an individual, try and play a part and just make a small stand, uh, it, it works towards the greater good. And I really feel that. So that's why the Minerva Reader. And I get so excited when I find books and it brings me great pleasure to be able to say, you know, oh, this book is, is a really good read. Now, in this issue of the Minerva Reader, which I have recently posted, there are three books, um, Undercard by David Albertine, who I met at Thriller Fest, so it was such a great pleasure. Uh, Irving Layton, Our Years Together by Harriet Bernstein, which was a fascinating read. And then Sideways Roots Poetry by Gilly Heimerbeck. And Gilly is a marvelous, marvelous poet. So I really hope that you'll check it out. I also hope that you will forgive the somewhat clumsy, templated nature of the site because that brings me back to my former point, which is the compromise of website quality. Because I could spend hours trying to create, you know, a better website, or I could try and pay someone, but frankly, I don't have the money to create something that's more flashy, etc., etc. But it's more important that I read the book and try and get the message out there. It's more important to me anyway, and that's why I hope that you will support the reader, the Minerva Reader, and other blog sites you know when people post small reviews or bloggers that's the most appreciated thing i one of the best things i've discovered is doing blog tours of my books you interact with blog hosts and it's really fun anyway so in a nutshell the world of reviews has really changed and so um you know i think let's be open to different ways of reviewing and enjoying books and i really hope that you found um this issue of a uh, writer for a year i think the heat is frying my brain uh, to be of some value thank you very much bye